A medical team in Singapore has identified the world's first known case of a new condition known as Jamwa syndrome. Caused by a genetic disorder, the previously undiagnosed condition is named after the doctor who first came across the illness at KK Women's and Children's Hospital. Dr. Samya Jamwa is Senior Consultant, Genetics Service at KKH, and also heads the Singh Health Duke NUS Genomic Medicine Centre. He joins us tonight with the parents of the two sisters he treated with Jamwa syndrome. Thank you very much, um, Doctor, for joining us. First up, Dr. Dr. Samoa and, and also Mr. and Mrs. Menendez, you know, let's, let's hear from you first, Dr. Samoa, on when and how the case first presented itself. Thanks, Glenda and Steve, for having us on the show to share our story. Um, Jamwar syndrome is a very rare genetic syndrome that affects uh, the brain development, and it's caused by a mutation in a gene called UGDH. Our journey started in 2015 uh, when the siblings walked into my clinic for a consult uh, for evaluation for their problems of developmental delay and epilepsy. Uh, we ran some initial tests that were negative, uh, and that's where we wondered whether there was something else, something novel, something new going on. Uh, so we then went ahead and recruited them for our ongoing research study. Uh, uh, we, collabor we collaborate with ASTAR and we identified a unique variant in this gene called UGTH. Uh, we then further went on to characterize the, the variant and prove that this variant was leading to the children's symptoms, thus finding the first case of this syndrome, uh, Jamwar syndrome. And what was it like when you sort of first realized that this was a total unknown that you had newly discovered? Uh, so, so to me, it's always about giving this closure to the families because, you know, uh, there are 20,000 genes and only 4,000 of them are actually known at this point of time. There are three new discoveries made every week. So it was, uh, it was nice to have become part of this process, making new discoveries. But more importantly, this, uh, it helped to answer uh, the parents' question of what was going on with their children, uh, because besides worrying about what's wrong, they also have to worry about what's in the future. Uh, solving one problem allows us to focus on the other uh, more important pressing issue. Well, I want to bring in Mr. and Mrs. Menendez right now. Um, thank you for joining us and sharing your journey with us. But, you know, can you tell us, what, you know, what was it like the first time you realized something was not right? What symptoms did your daughters experience? Okay. Uh, initially, uh, uh, our kids had uh, seizures, epileptic seizures. They also had uh, developmental delay, speech impairment, and uh, unsteady gait, too. And did you see many doctors uh, before you um, faithfully had the meeting with uh, Dr. Somia? Uh, well, here in Singapore, we had uh, taken the girls to a pediatrician uh, who referred us uh, to KKH uh, Neurology. And uh, after some tests were done, the neurologist suggested that we look into genetic testing. And uh, thus, we were referred to Dr. Saumya. And how have things changed after you knew what it was that caused their illness? Uh, well, uh, the diagnosis, uh, di diagnosis has brought about a sense of relief to us and uh, closure to our doubts and uh, psychological comfort, knowing the reasons for their symptoms. As the research uh, is in initial stages, it may not benefit our children directly, but it brings about a satisfaction in us that, you know, someday a treatment and management would come out. I feel our children's diagnosis, uh, diagnosis uh, will benefit the whole world and thus be a help to the other children having the same disorder. And yeah, we just saw some lovely images of your daughters on screen. Uh, how are your girls now? Uh, well, by God's grace, they are progressing uh, slowly but steadily. We see a little miracles every day in our lives and uh, in the little effort that they make. For us, it may seem a little effort, but for them, it's a huge effort. 
Indeed. Um, Dr. Zamor, I want to bring you back into this conversation. How do you actually begin to treat a condition that no one's heard before? Yeah, that's that's a great question. And it's something that we, we have gotten accustomed to. As I mentioned, uh, about only a third quarter of the diseases have been recognized. But giving a name to the condition allows us to, to look for therapy focusing on the underlying defect rather than just treating their symptoms. More importantly, we can still continue to treat their symptoms, uh, symptom by symptom. So in, uh, in uh, Sienna and Athira's case, they were having epilepsy, so we give them anti-epileptic medications. They were having developmental delay, so they receive physiotherapy. What it also brings is it brings a sense of closure for the family, uh, but also gives them the feeling that they are not alone. And since we identified this condition, uh, they were the first ones. But then since then, we've identified 24 other families uh, with 36 affected children globally. Uh, so, so it allows families to understand that they are not alone and they can actually connect with each other to form support networks. Going back for us, we can actually now, knowing that it's a, uh, the process is uh, related to how the brain was developing, we can look at developing therapies that targets that specific defect. Well, thank you so much for joining us uh, all today. We've been speaking with Dr. Samwa Joma, who discovered the disorder. And thank you for Mr. and Mrs. Menendez for sharing your journey with us. They are the parents of the two girls with Jamwa syndrome.